So we all have a snap and it's a date or a time. And for some people that starts at 20, for some 30, 40, 50. And unfortunately, snap can even start for somebody at 60 years old. And you're asking yourself, okay, what is snap? Snap is stop now and plan. And a lot of people don't really do this in an adequate amount of time to prepare themselves for their retirement future. People from an early age have this issue with procrastination. You know, whether when, when you were a small child, you know, and the, your mom said to you, eat those carrots, and you sat at that dinner table and sat at that dinner table, even knowing that you were getting ready to go outside and play ball with your friends. But you procrastinated because that's part of human nature. And I think part of it is, is fear. And that's what a lot of people have when it comes to investing and planning um, for their retirement, especially when they're young. You know, when you're 20 years old um, or even 25 or 30 years old for some people, they, they just, they, it's not even on their radar. But now that we're finding that uh, people are gonna live into their 90s and, and above, and it's happening every day now, and the amount of money that you're going to need for that uh, retirement um, has to be substantial. Um, planning is also a, uh, a big uh, area there as well because, you know, it's been drowned into our heads since we were little, you know, since we were like teenagers that you had to buy your RSPs um, to get that tax uh, refund and build for your retirement. However, um, one thing that people need to do is plan. So here's the uh, explanation of, of this video. Stop now and plan. Um, one of the things that you can use for that is a, just a simple spreadsheet. And you can use a simple spreadsheet for not only planning for retirement, but you can also use it for planning for anything in your life, whether it be washing a, buying a new dishwasher or buying a new car or buying a house, um, figuring out, you know, a, a renovation um, for your house. And um, what, a, what a spreadsheet will do is, is allows you to, in somewhat real time, figure out different scenarios. So when it comes to investing, you can, you can actually download many spreadsheets that will give you uh, formulas to look at and figure out when you need to start investing and how much you need to start investing um, to get where you need to go. And getting back to the, uh, you know, the scenario of uh, procrastination, um, I, I will fully admit I was one of those folks that didn't start until I was around 35 or 40. And um, I've done okay, but I could have done a lot better if I would have taking the time to stop and plan now. So that's the moral of this uh, video. And I hope it, uh, it helps you a lot. So when building an investment um, account to last a lifetime requires a lot of different uh, areas to concentrate on. Um, one is when to start. Well, you need to start as early as possible. And whether that be, you know, after you get your first job, um, your first paper route, whatever that case may be, you need to start early. And the earlier you start, the more money you're going to end up with. And um, there's an expression that uh, Warren Buffett uses, which money never sleeps, and it doesn't. And if you're making money while you're sleeping, you're on a good path to um, a healthy re um, retirement account. So the other thing that you need to look at is how much to invest. Sort of the rule of thumb out there is 20% of your paycheck. Now, you're going to say, well, how the heck do I do that when, you know, I'm trying to buy a house and I'm trying to, you know, buy a car and I'm, I'm trying to have kids and I'm trying to do all these things. But you got to pay yourself first. And that's the most important thing. You got to pay yourself first and you got to plan ahead because one of the things that's going to happen to a lot of people like myself as we get older is we're going to end up in what they call long-term care. And 
the costs for long-term term care are at this point astronomical and they're probably going to get crazier. So um, you, you need to start early. Where to invest? Well, they have a lot of what they call robo-advisors now. And with uh, Quest Trade, Wealth Simple, and a lot of these different uh, companies are advertising these low-cost ways for people to invest somewhat hands-off. And um, they are good and they are bad. Um, they are good in the sense that for a very low fee, um, they will take your money and they will invest it um, with the risk inversion that you um, are looking for. So when you're in your 20s, well, you know, you might have 85% uh, of your portfolio in stocks and, and some in bonds, some in cash. Um, and as you get older, that, that scale will, will start to um, lower and you'll have, you know, more um, fixed asset um, type investments and less um, um, in um, equities like stocks like Apple or Facebook or, or whatever the case may be. And um, the third thing is you got to plan um, ahead to where your money will finally end up. Because we all, you know, we all read all everything and it says, oh, you've got to invest and invest your money and all that sort of thing. But none of these companies really um, advertise what happens, you know, when you drop. <laughs> and that's almost as important as building up um, your investment accounts to uh, pay for your retirement. Now, the, the RRSP was created um, a long time ago with the impression that that was the end all of, of a way to invest um, for a healthy and great retirement. And what has happened in the last few years, a lot of different uh, analysts and, and other folks on YouTube or wherever have, have brought it to the people's attention that that's not necessarily the great way to go for everybody. Um, if you have an income above $100,000 a year, then you're going to get a pretty good tax refund um, when you buy an RRSP. And that money is going to grow in your RRSP. But if you don't have an income above $50,000, we'll say, then it makes a lot of sense for that person to maybe invest their money in a TFSA as opposed to putting the bulk of it in an RRSP. And the simple reason is somebody making, say, $45,000 would only be paying 15% income tax. So they're not going to have a lot of money um, that they're paying each year in tax. So the re refund isn't going to be very substantial, whereas somebody that's making, say, $100,000 could get a pretty hefty refund um, on their money. And the other thing is tax time... Um, when it comes to later in years. So when you start taking money out of your RSP, for most people it's 65, you're going to be taking out a percentage um, each year to pay your bills. And if you're also receiving CPP from the government, old age security, and maybe even the GIS, that income from the RRSP is is and maybe will bump you up to um, a tax bracket, maybe even above 50%. So a lot of that money that you put into RRSP is going to go to the tax man. The second thing, when you turn 71, the government mandates that you have to convert your um, RRSP to what they call a RIF, or you have to start taking mandatory withdrawals from that RRSP. Same thing again, if you have to take out um, five or eight percent or whatever the government decides at that time out of that RRSP, then that could very well put you in a 50% tax bracket as well. And all that money that you um, scrimped and saved in that RRSP is going to end up going to the tax man. The third and final idea or uh, scenario when it comes to an RRSP is the fact that when you die, fine, if you have a spouse, 
a husband or a wife. And when you pass away, the RSP goes tax-free to your spouse. But if you're a single person or your spouse has passed away and you die, the government immediately in that year that you died, they will add all of your RSP money to your estate. And it'll be probably at least 50%. So if you had a million dollar RSP, $500,000 of that money is gonna to go to the tax man. And that's, in my opinion, that's not fair. And, and that's just kind of disgusting when you think about it. So that's when the TFSA comes in, the, uh, tr the uh, tax-free savings account in Canada. And you could take that. So instead of bulking up your RRSPs every year when you're younger, if you take your uh, $6,000 a year, that's the current amount that you can put in a TFSA. If you start putting that in a TFSA at the age of 20 um, or 25 or whatever your, your SNAP age is, um, then that money is going to build tax-free um, for the rest of your life. And not only is it tax-free to remove from the TFSA anytime you wish, it's tax-free to go to your, uh, your heirs. So your kids will inherit that money tax-free, your spouse. Um, if you're going to donate it to an um, organization or a charity, that money will go tax-free. And the other thing is, when you get to be 71, um, there are no mandatory withdrawals from that TFSA. And any money that you do take out of it is tax-free. And it's not declared income. So the money can be used. So if you took $10,000 out of your TFSA every year after the age of 65 or 71, or any time in between, then that money is not going to affect your old age security or the guaranteed income supplement. So in the, in the government's eyes, that is not income. So you don't get penalized because how the GIS works, the guaranteed income supplement is as your income climbs to a certain level, the amount that you're entitled to for the GIS goes down on a sliding scale. So, in the government's eyes, you could have a million dollars in a TFSA, and if you start contributing to it at the age of 20, you could very well end up with a million dollars at the age of 60. You invested in some good stocks or some good ETFs, and it'll just grow and grow and grow. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to give 50% of you know my RSP or my savings um, to the tax man. I want to be able to pass down some money to uh, my children. And I also want to be able to um, live a good retirement without having to save every nickel along the way to get that million dollar RRSP. Because a lot of people, a lot of people will not have anywhere near a million dollar RRSP. Um, you know, the, I don't know, the stats are, are kind of scary. You know, they say that the average person above uh, 55 in Canada and the U.S. has less than $25,000 saved for retirement. Now, I don't know about you, but the cost of living is going up and up and up every day. So that's not going to go very far. Um, now, the other thing that um, stop now and plan that I wanted to talk about is, is if you're a, a senior or or getting up into your older age and you have a home that has appreciated uh, substantially, um, there's two notions that people have. One of them is to sell your house and take that money and invest it. And some people have been very successful doing that. However, in today's day and age with interest rates, you know, down to zero almost, taking that money and putting it into the stock market can be a risky proposition. However, if you have your home and it's appreciating, you know, 5% every year, or in the last couple of years, some houses have appreciated 30%, then you can't ask for a better investment than that. So for some folks, 
you might be better off renting out part of your home. You might be better off sitting down with your children and saying, you know what, we need to pay the taxes on the house and the uh, utilities and some expenses. You help us with this. And then down the road, you'll inherit our home tax free. And for a, a, a person that's say 30 years old or 35 years old, helping out their parents in that fashion, um, they will get a very high return on their money. Because even if your taxes were 5,000 a year and other expenses were 5,000 a year, if they gave you $10,000 every year um, towards your home to keep it, and you lived another 20 or 25 years, that's $250,000. Right now, as an example, my house is worth 800,000. There's no reason why by the time I'm 80, which is about 18 years, the house could be worth 1.5 million. So your, you know, your 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 uh, daughter or your son or a combo of both take, you know, some of their money and put it into the house and say they've put 250,000 each in that 20 years. Well, I don't know too many stock markets that you're going to end up putting 250,000 and, you know, getting 900,000 basically pretty well risk free. Um, when you think about it, because housing has typically always gone up like any investment. It has gone down and up and down and up. But generally in the last 50 years, houses have just gone on a steady up, whereas we know what the stock market has done. Um, long term, yes, the stock market has has appreciated, but um, it also has crazy ups and downs. It requires a little bit of expertise to navigate it. Um, and there is a very high risk that you could lose your money. So that's another scenario I wanted to you know, have young people understand for sure. Um, in closing, don't put off your retirement too long. Don't say, oh, well, you know, when, when my house sells for, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell my house in, in five years. It's going to be worth $2 million and I'll retire then because I have enough money. And I'm not going to retire until my RRSP has this much money. And I'm not going to retire until I'm 65 because my CPP will be this much money. And, you know, um, I get bored, so I'm not going to retire. Well, I'll tell you, life is funny. Um, and not funny in the good sense because just myself, personally, I know at least five people that I grew up with and went to school with, went to high school with, that had what I would call, you know, life by the, uh, you know, I can't say the word because this is, uh, well, life by the balls. How's that? And they died suddenly. Heart attacks, strokes, cancer, you name it. They died with everything going for them. Some of them had index pensions, um, you know, some of them had big RSPs and big houses and then all the rest of it. And they passed away at like 61, 62, 58, 57, that sort of thing. So don't, don't wait until some special thing happens because you know what? It's a big world out there and there's just so amazing uh, and so many great things to, uh, to see. Um, you know, I'm not saying you have to travel around the world, but you know what? Canada is a beautiful place. There's lots of beautiful places in the U.S. Um, you know that you can travel and visit and 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 uh, you know just spend time with your family and and your husband or your wife or for some people their girlfriend I guess <laughs> not me, <laughs> hun. Anyhow, um, just just don't don't work away your golden years because life is too short. We all know that. And things like this pandemic, you know, come along and for a lot of people, it's it's changed their lives and, and uh, some for the better and unfortunately some for not so much for the better. But I think we're heading in the right direction as far as all that goes. And, you know, we just have to keep steering along. So I hope this discussion on SNAP makes you think um, that's the, the real um, purpose of my videos is to make people think of, of what it is that they they could or can't do in this life and 
um, you know, some, I, I won't call it advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just somebody that's done a lot of research and um, from my own uh, and my wife's uh, retirement. And I, I believe that SNAP is a very important thing at any age, um, but the old expression, money uh, never sleeps. So the more money that you can get into your TFSA or your RRSP or whatever the case may be before you um, have to retire, um, the easier your life will be. So thanks again. Um, I haven't done a video for a while. Um, I appreciate everyone that watches and comments. Please subscribe to my channel because it allows more people to see it in the uh, YouTube um, algorithms and comments also help. So thanks very much. Um, have a great day and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much.